Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us this evening for our 10th annual theatrical performance and dinner. We're pleased to present to you this evening the 1968 version of Yours, Mine, and Ours, originally starring Henry Fonda and Lucille Ball. This evening, we give you a veteran cast to once again bring this comical story of two large families joined together as one. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage this evening, the Beardsley family, played by Sean Colfarber, Josh Walkup, Nick Upton, Morgan Dunn, Owen Luzon, and Mar Marcus May. Attention! Present arms! Order arms! Dismissed! <laughs> Next, please welcome the North family, played by Audra Colfarber, Jordan Walker, Megan Jones, Allison Dunn, Rachel Glasgow, Nate Upton, Otis Rayner, Gene Rayner, and Catherine Dunn. <laughs> Our supporting cast includes this evening Philip Walker playing Frank's Navy friend, Michael Jones playing Dr. Jones, Stephen May playing the Honorable Judge May, Joy Jones playing Mrs. Jones, the school teacher, and Mrs. Ferguson, the maid, and Jan Hoff playing Mrs. Hart, the store and the storekeeper and a maid. Our technical support staff includes Dana Upton as our stage manager, Simone Fahrenholt playing one of the store clerks and assisting with stage management, Darcy Dunn playing a maid and managing our stage lights, Emmy Fahrenholt managing our house lights, Stephanie Fahrenholt helping with back backstage management, and Michael Dunn managing production of video tonight. We would also like to thank our wonderful kitchen crew who promises to deliver a fantastic meal during intermission. Last but not least, please join in welcoming the lady who brings to you tonight this performance, our director, Beth Huff. We thank you for your continued support of the Bentonville Beavers Pathfinder Club, a youth ministry of the Bentonville Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy yours, mine, and ours. In a few short hours, I was going into combat against my own children. Anyone who has a child knows what I'm talking about. That's the real war. Our generation against theirs. Standing on the Navy ship deck, surrounded by thousands of men, I suddenly felt smaller and lonelier than I have ever felt in my whole life. I've been through this same Golden Gate when my Jennifer died, and I came home on an emergency leave. Now I was back for good. I had left more than my heart in San Francisco. Five children, to be exact. As I sailed under the bridge, I didn't know I was passing under my future. Because while I was going home to face my family, Helen was bringing hers to a new life in a new city. And don't think I wasn't terrified. I had become a Navy widow, you see. I thought it was a good idea to get a fresh start, where the surroundings would remind me so much of David. But three of my surroundings looked exactly like him. What troubled me more than anything was that the kids seemed more upset about leaving their friends in Seattle than the loss of their father. It took me a long time to learn how little I knew about my children. As my ship sailed into bay, I took a good look around because I knew I had completed my last tour abroad. My brother and his wife had been taking care of my kids 
but now it was daddy's turn. So I started down the gangplank, certain I was doing the right thing, nobly sacrificing myself for my children, giving up my world for theirs, pulling away forever from ships and oceans and homecoming to take up shore duty. Papa came marching home, securing the knowledge that they needed me and would be overjoyed that I came back to take care of them. But they controlled their feelings beautifully. It was the sort of welcome that could make any father review his position on the entire question of whether or not to have children. Incredible as it may seem, they blamed me for neglecting their mother all those years. But it seemed to me there was enough physical evidence that I had not neglected her completely. I had high hopes though that I could learn to manage the children. If I lived through this, the Navy would have to give me a new kind of medal. Well, let's get something to eat. Marcus and Owen, we'll figure out the rest later. So what's the plan? Are you gonna auction off to the highest bidder or just find a big hole and dump us all in? You've gotta be kidding. There's no one that could afford you guys because you eat more than a whole ship combined. Besides, well, let's just go to the kitchen and get some food. Which one of us do you wanna cook? <laughs> the war was on. I put an ad in the newspaper for a housekeeper that brought immediate results. The first one lasted an entire day. The second one lasted seven days until we discovered she was hiding from the police. After a week with us, she turned herself in. No wonder men go down to sea in the ship. I would have gone back in a life raft. Ah! I had rented an ideal house close to the Navy base so I could work part-time as a nurse at the base hospital, close to the school, close to the playground, and close to the grocery store. I hate it! I hate it! is not over and no you cannot go look at me you have been getting in trouble at school you have been bugging your brother what is wrong with you what happened to that good boy that lives inside there i'll never begin again i'll never ever be good again i don't want to die what are you talking about my friends at school tell me the good ones die young that's why daddy died you can make me write a million sentences or send me to my room for the rest of my life but i'll never be good again <laughs> Then one day, Frank and I just happened to run into each other. I've been wrapped up in my children for so long that getting this close to an attractive woman sent my early morning radar pulsing frantically. I was glad to have a reason for a second look myself. <laughs> Frank, did you requisition those further lenses we discussed? That's work, and we can talk about that tomorrow. Besides, I have a whole second job taking care of my five kids at home. So here, help me with this. Frank, you've got to get out more. Do you realize at this very hour, the world is filled with lovely ladies you can get to know? Come on, if you're too shy to do it in person, there's always advent of singles connection. <laughs> well, you know, there's more to life than finding women, and besides, I'm not that desperate. Now, don't tell me it's not on your mind. Any man with as many kids as you could use some companionship, even if it is on a dating site. You know, I heard on the radio just last week that now 50% of all lasting relationships are started online. Well, I'll let you know that I've met somebody, and 
all without the internet. <laughs> well, those SpongeBob does get out once in a while, huh? <laughs> yeah, I I have to admit that I had her pop tarts and she had my oatmeal. What? Well, no, I mean we met at Walmart just a while ago. So you just saw this girl? You don't actually know her? Frank, what is wrong with you? You're gonna be an old maid the rest of your life? Do you really think that's what Jennifer would want? Now are you gonna play that card on me? I'll have you know something. That there is things that are looking up because uh oh we now have a maid with staying power. She's been here a whole two weeks and you know it looks like that I'll be able to borrow your laptop and you can help me out with my dating profile. Well, let's see here. I don't know. Let's just head on home. <laughs> well, Mrs. Anderson, where are you going? I'm leaving, and I'm Mrs. Ferguson. Mrs. Anderson was last week. Boy, she left her drumstick in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who did what to Mrs. Ferguson? It was Ferguson. Wait, it was, it was one at a time. She and Morgan had a fight. A bad fight. Morgan wanted to come out of the bathroom for an hour, so she barked and never hurt, and there was yelling. I guess she slipped on the soap or something? Anyway, she fell. She didn't fall. She fainted right on the floor. When she came out of the bathroom, I was kind of mad, so I had to push her. Wait one second! Morgan fainted? Where is she? She's over there crying. We tried to talk to her. I think she may be dying. <laughs> Morgan, Morgan, what's the problem with you and Mrs. Ferguson? I don't want to talk about it, Dad. Well, your brothers told me that you fainted. What happened? It's... I just want to get out of this house. I want to be alone. Well, then let me take you to the doctor. No! Why would I want to go to the doctor? I don't want them to see me. Like it or lump it, honey, no. we're taking you to the doctor. No! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Beardsley? Oh, yes. How is she? Oh, she's fine. Nothing to worry about. But, um, can I talk to you for a minute, maybe privately? Oh, of course. Um, <clears throat> I know we've scarcely met, but I feel like I should at least mention this to you. Okay, what is it? Well, your daughter tells me that you're a widower. Oh, yes. Well, I'm very sorry. It's just that Morgan seems to feel the loss of her mother very deeply, and top of that, she's going through a very trying time emotionally. Yeah, and I don't understand. Is it because I'm stupid? <laughs> no, but you're a man, which is sometimes the same thing. <laughs> oh, you can learn to do the cooking for the family and even the shopping, but that hardly makes you a mother. But I'm not cut out for that job. Well, it, it seems like Morgan's had a very difficult time telling you lately that, well, you know, a tree can blossom in the middle of a city, but a young girl needs privacy, and she hasn't been able to get that at home. So if she's been a little, I don't know, upset or even hysterical at times, it's because she's she's growing up and suddenly changing. Is that all? Why didn't she just tell me? Because you would have said, is that all? <laughs> no. It seems like she's been very upset about having to share her room. And then when the maid walked in on her today while she was taking a bath, she was just so embarrassed that... Oh, my poor Morgan. She's growing up and I've never noticed. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I actually have the same problem, only in reverse. You see, I'm a widow. Oh, now, I'm sorry. Ha has it been long? Forever. Almost a year now. Mm, I understand. My David, he was a... He was a navigator, and he crashed in a routine training flight. Oh, Navy? <laughs> what else is there? You know, they tell me that it's the hardest on the children, but you know, I, I think it's not true. Yes, and right now I think you have a rather difficult assignment with your daughter. You should go on in there and talk to her and take her home. Well, thank you, Mrs. North, or Helen. 
Oh, well, thank you, Mrs. North Helen. And I was wondering, uh, when do you, uh, are you on duty here? Afternoon. It's five days a week. Oh, well, great. If my kids get sick over the weekend, I'll just tie them over. Very good. <laughs> oh, wait, I have another question. Yes? Do you eat dinner? Yes, most every night, in fact. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I eat dinner, too, and I was thinking that maybe you and I could go to dinner tomorrow. <laughs> well, now that we've established the fact that we both eat dinner, sure, why not? When would you like to pick me up? Oh, how about 1,900 hours? Aye, aye, sir. We'll see you then. <laughs> Ridiculous with all this goop on my eyes. M Mommy, you're beautiful. Of course she is, dummy. Is this necessary? I mean, I got your father with all this. You were younger then. Now just be still. Thanks. <laughs> hey, Mom, is he handsome? I mean, in the old sort of way? Really? I can't wait to see him. Me, me too. Now hold on. Let's not overwhelm him with family on the first date, huh? You mean he doesn't know about us? Yes, he knows about you. You lied to him? How romantic. I did not lie to him. I just didn't have the nerve to, you know, tell him the whole truth. I understand. No man wants to have a liaison with a woman that has eight kids. What is a liaison? An affair. <laughs> now That's hold, what I thought. Hold on, young lady. I am not having an affair, and I am not having a liaison. I am just going to dinner, and as soon as I tell him about all of you, trust me, he'll bring me home in plenty of time for dessert. <laughs> Josh, make sure everyone's in bed by 2200 hours. 10 o'clock. Seriously? Seriously, Dad? They stay up later in prison. Well, that could be arranged if you would like to move. Hey, Nick, when you're done with your guitar, spend 10 minutes on your geometry book. Whatever. Flowers? Dad, really? That's ridiculous. How do you expect to make any moves with that approach? You know, we're just going to dinner and that's all. Did you tell the lady you have five children at home? You can bet he didn't. He'll just hand her those flowers and then tell her a sad story about how lonely it is here at home. Well, you know what? Over the last year, every time I've taken a woman out to eat or have been foolish enough to bring her home, You've made her feel unwelcome. And for everything that I've done, maybe as little as it may be, I think I deserve your consideration. And, you know, I think it's the my generation that is the giver and your generation that is the taker. So I'm going to strike a blow for freedom. And from now on, if you don't, I'm going to think of myself, and if you don't like it, well, tough. But are you gonna tell her? Yes, I'm going to tell her. You'll be a show tonight, Mom. Yeah, Mommy, you're beautiful. Oh, thank you, dears. Okay, I think I'm ready. Zip me up. I can't get it. It's stuck. You didn't even try. Oh, come on. Let me have a go at this. Be careful. Oh, we'll see. Oops. What? It kind of ripped. You ripped it? This is the only thing I have clean. Fix it. I can't go out like this. Okay, okay. Jeez. Here, um, we can just pin it up and you can put a wrap on. Oh, Catherine, honey, go downstairs and tell your brother to whistle the minute he sees Mr. Beardsley. But I want to watch. The minute he sees Mr. Beardsley. Hey, would you stand still? Put together with pins and glue. If there's a strong wind, I'm in trouble. <laughs> There he is! Hurry up! Hurry up! Cover it up! Okay, you're fine. Hurry up! Fine. Oh. Look, there he comes. Oh. Wow, look at his car. He must be in the Navy. Look at all those pins on his jacket. Look at those stripes. I got flowers for mom. Wow, well, look at his car. I mean, okay, I'm gonna go now. Get away from the door. Get away from the door. Here, honey. Pass that on. Get away from the door. Stop that! <laughs> Oh, boy, I like, I know how you like to get places on time. Let's go. I do? Yes. Well. Uh, yes, where are we going? Oh, just a little place in San Francisco. Oh, and, and I brought you these. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's go. Well, don't you want to put them in a glass of water in the house? Oh, right, boy, they're my favorite. Catherine, honey, put 
Dorothy's get away from the door. <laughs> Boy, it's a great night. Boy, it's lovely stars. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> I had a wonderful time at dinner. I didn't know whether it was the food or Frank or the fact that I didn't have to do the dishes. I couldn't stop talking. I told her about Jennifer, the Navy, about the new carrier landing system I was working on. I told her about everything but the children. Funny how that never came up. I guess I figured it would be easier over some hot tea. While Frank went to order the tea, I was trying desperately to come up with the most graceful way to break it to him. I have eight children. Yeah, that's not important. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I've got eight kids. Isn't that funny? Yeah, that's not funny. <laughs> some tea from the Pathfinders. It's decaf. It's the greatest. Oh, it's piping hot with a little bit of honey, and it is just so delicious. Mm. Mm. It is good. <clears throat> Frank. Oh, what? There's actually something I was going to tell you. Oh, okay. Um, you know that dinner we had tonight? Well, I enjoyed all eight courses. Well, so did I. And speaking of children. Why well, we're not speaking of children. Oh, well, that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's just you, me, on a lonely island with no kids possible in the world and the nice barista over there that gave us this green tea. Well, I'll drink to that. Well, you know, I do have a question for you. Oh, yes? What is it? So, you do like children, don't you? Within reason. <laughs> oh, by all means, never mind. No, 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 no. That was rude of me. I'm sorry. You see, it's... Uh, while we're on the subject again, <clears throat> I might as well just tell you something, you know, along that line. Um, Frank, I just... Um, well... What? Um, what um, uh, oh, Frank, I'm, um, I'm suddenly having a, uh, a craving, a terrible craving for a, uh, a chocolate brownie. And you see, if I don't get a chocolate brownie, I may just go into a diabetic coma and just Oof. fall flat on the floor right here. And then you should get me one fast, okay? Okay, I'll get one, but what did you want? Large, small, with whipped cream? Yeah, yeah, and hurry. Okay. Oh, oh. nurse. Oh, Philip, am I glad to see you. You gotta help me. You see, before my left, my dress broke, the zipper and the girls pinned it, but I think all the pins are coming undone. Fix it. Here, let me help. Oh, goodness. No, don't worry. I helped Admiral Lewis to pay once. I suppose that's supposed to make me feel better. Whoops. What? The pin just broke. Philip! Now I have a gaping hole in the back of my dress, and Frank is coming back, and... Oh, what Hold am on, I, I have an idea. What? <laughs> Philip! This isn't a joke! Philip, this isn't gonna work! I'm gonna look like a traffic cone! Hold on, I'm not done yet. Oh. Philip! That should do it. I suppose Don't I should say out a roll. thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh! <laughs> I brought your brownie! Oh, no, thank you. I, I don't eat chocolate this late at night. <laughs> Here to join us, Philip? Don't mind if I do. Let's drink to the perfect couple. Two people with so much in common, it's positively nauseating. You know, I just found out that Helen's the mother of... Oh, Philip! I'm sorry! I just... Sometimes I have these strange reflexes and I'm so clumsy. Some that's all right. I'm used to it. Over at Frank's, when they pass the soup at the dinner table, it's like Niagara Falls. He probably hasn't told you, but he has a whole family. Oh, well, sorry! Oh. 
sure is a rough sea tonight. Good thing it's not crowded in here. Yeah, speaking of crowds, you know, you two kids really belong to each other. Do you realize Helen that has a whole lot? Oh, Philip, I'm sorry. That it just snuck hey, right out. If you, and I just if you two want to be alone, just tell me. No, really, I can take a hint. It's okay. I'm, I'm sorry. You should be. Hey, would you like to get out of here? Yeah, let's let's go. Um, actually, Frank, no, I have something I need to tell you. Well, now, what kind of craving do you have this time? No, if only it were that trivial. Um, <clears throat> Frank? Yes? Oh, help me. I have eight children. <laughs> eight children? Yes, four boys and, um, four girls. Well, I have something interesting to share with you. <laughs> what? I have... Five children. Five? five? Frank, this isn't a joke. Five? Yeah, four boys and one girl. Frank, eight and five is... Ridiculous. <laughs> I think I need to sit back down. Eight and five? Oh, Frank. Yeah? Gee, I wish you'd known my late husband, David. Mm, he sounds wonderful. Yeah, he was all wrapped up in his children and in his job. And you, of course. True. <laughs> Frank, this is silly. Yeah? This, this is never going to work. I mean, I've had a lovely time and I think you're great, but eight and five, Frank, this could never go anywhere. I just, I just don't see this working. Well... Thank you, Mrs. North Helen. You know, I want to tell you, this has been the first, or the best first and last date of my whole entire life. I enjoyed it too, Frank. It was nice knowing you. Why didn't I tell you? I got third degree T burns when I tried to tell you. <laughs> but hey, don't you worry about a thing. I've got a few less crowded ladies you might like to get to know. You know, I, I don't. No, I don't think so. It's just not going to work. That's what worries me. <sighs> well, then what do you want me to do? How am I going to, I don't know, find a woman that wants five kids? Just don't tell her. <laughs> what? You want me to lie about it? No, just don't bring up the subject until later. Much later. Now, I know a quiet little restaurant just outside the city. I'll make the reservation. Lady Madeline George III is her name. Well then, what is she like? You two will hit it off just fine. No, Philip, and stop trying to arrange my life. Helen, I'm surprised you haven't met him already. Now make a fist. <laughs> All right. Out. I haven't done anything yet. Hey, I was practicing. Besides, he's a great doctor. The kind who scrubs before a date. Tremendous reputation. Uh -huh. Nine different medical awards. Uh-huh. Okay, now. Out. Out. No more dates. Don't think of him as a date. Think of him as a free meal. Now, I know a quiet little restaurant just outside the city. I'll make the reservation. You just have to show up. Well, what does he look like? Well, I hate to use the word debonair, but there's really no other way to describe Dr. Ashford. The touch of gray at the temples. Very distinctive. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I had to lie just a little. Anybody who knew Frank and Helen knew they belonged together. All I had to do was let them stumble over each other a few times. You have to do that with the marrying kind of people. Just a little while later. Oh. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Fancy meeting you here. Yeah, I've been waiting almost over a whole hour. Uh, Philip, he set me up on a blind date and I don't know where she's at. Oh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> I'm here too on a date that uh, Philip set up for me. 
Oh, something seems a little fishy. Why? Let me guess. The person that Philip set you up on the date, his name is Dr. Ashford. Well, yes, in fact, that is... Oh, <laughs> I get it. There is no Dr. Ashford, is there? No, that's Philip's go-to fictional character. And you know, the next time I see Philip, I'm gonna wring his neck. Well, not if I don't get to him first. Besides, it's, it's not your problem. Well, then, do you want to eat dinner with me? Because I haven't had anything, and I was figuring you might not have it either. Actually, I haven't. I just came from work, and having a knockdown drag out with my oldest daughter, she is texting this boy, who is four years older than her. He drives a motorcycle. He has dyed red hair and dreadlocks. She never talks to me about him, never brings him home to meet me. I'm like, I'm at my wit's end knowing what to do with her. You know, if you forbid him, but forbid her from talking to him or tell him to get lost, it will make her like him that much more. I know, you know, she's only 16 and she's been after me to let her go out with him. I, where they're gonna go, I don't know. Well, my girl, Morgan, she's 16 too and she's so boy crazy. You know, I think she's gonna get married before she turns 18 and you know, she doesn't like school and man, she hates to read. Boy, I know what that's like. Otis, my 12 year old, hates to read, can't spell, but my littlest, Catherine, can read better than he does. <laughs> you know, my uh, Marcus, who is 10, he corrects Nick's spelling. Mm, that's like my Gene. He helps Rachel, my older daughter, with her math. Only Gene, he can't spell at all. It's, it's like a zoo at my house. You, you know, I, I really enjoyed your company. Me too. And the fact that I'm a man and you're a woman, well, maybe we could be uh, friends. Well, I certainly think we could be. Oh, what am I kidding? I don't know. I, I really like you and I really enjoy your company and I was hoping that we could be more than just friends. Well, I like you too, Frank. <laughs> and I'd like to see you again too. And the other thing, even though my kids are so frustrating and, oh, almost hellions, I, I'm glad I have five kids. And I'm glad I have my eight. <laughs> Between our work and the kids, we somehow were able to steal a few hours alone together. When every place we went was better because we were together. And I suddenly realized the emptiness was gone and that the world just might be worth living again. I knew it was time for the acid test. I invited Helen to my house to meet my crew. She's coming, she's coming, she's coming. What does she look like? Me, you can see in her eyes. Frank, I'm nervous. Oh, don't worry about it. You know, I had a conversation with the kids, and, and I think everything's going to just be fine. You know? Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Mrs. North. Oh, well, Helen is just fine. Hi. And, oh, this is Morgan, and oh. you've met her. Yes, hi, Morgan. Nice Hello. to see you again. And we've got Josh, Nick, Josh, and Nick. Owen. Hi, Owen. Hi. Oh, and this is Marcus. Oh, hello, Marcus. You may call me Aunt Helen. I don't want another mother. I don't want another mother. That's enough. Josh, can you get us some tea? Sure thing, Aunt Helen. Frank, are you sure this is such a good idea? Everything's going to be fine. OK. Do you want to see my business portfolio? I'm going to be rich someday. Oh, sure. Uh, Dad, I'm going to help Josh with the tea. Hey, could you fill these with hot water, please? I got something a little extra special for Aunt Helen. Oh dear, what is it? It's just a little sleeping powder. You got a lovely nest It's not going to kill her, will it? No, no, it's made out of like medicinal grasses or something. It's harmless. All right, fine, whatever. Hey, you two! Is the tea almost done yet? It's coming, Dad! Here, make yourself useful and take those in there. Who's this who? This one is Auntie Helen's and this one's Uncle Daddy's. What's this? It's just some, a little something extra special I got for Aunt Helen. I'll take those in there before they get too cold. Tell me 
your secret. Over my sleeping body. <laughs> He's just teasing Helen. He's just teeing a little agave nectar. Well, it's, it looks wonderful. Well, now let's make a toast to our guest. Oh, uh, through the teeth and over the gums. Look out, stomach. Here it comes. <laughs> um, I guess that will do, but to our amazing, beautiful guest. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't take very long before I started to feel a little funny, like everything around me was swirling, almost like I was dreaming. I could hardly keep my eyes open, and I didn't want to say anything to Frank for fear that I'd just spoil the whole evening. Either that or give his kids the excuse that I really was just an old, tired lady. I could hardly concentrate on anything, and I was losing chunks of the conversation from dozing off. Helen? Huh? Helen? Huh? Oh. <sighs> what, Frank? Oh, I was just telling you the story oh, about... Oh, it's wonderful. Your family's so wonderful. Ooh. Yeah, I was telling you the story about Marcus. He was born in Japan, and that's why we call him our little fortune cookie because he came right after dinner. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, are you okay? You seem a little sleepy. Oh no, it's wonderful, wonderful, Frank. I feel I'm good. Well, I wanted to tell you that Morgan over there, she cooked the dinner all by herself. Oh, good job, honey. Don't you ever change. <laughs> I'm Marcus. That's Morgan. Of course you are. Good job. <laughs> well, how about we, uh... It's a little hot in here. I'm hot. Morgan, are you hot? I'm hot. No, I'm just fine. Aunt Helen. Uh, oh, sorry, Frank. Sorry. How about we just pray? Let's pray. Start to eat. Right? Everybody pray. Okay, bow your heads. Okay, bow your heads. Dear Jesus, thank you for this food and help it to nurse and strengthen our bodies. Thank you for everything. Amen. Amen. Um, are you okay? Yeah. It just is hot. My head feels funny. Oh. My hand feels funny. And I just, my hand feels funny. Excuse me, Aunt Helen, could you pass the potatoes, please? Uh, Aunt Helen? And Helen? Huh? Aunt Helen? Yeah. Can you pass Josh the food? Pass the food? The food's good. I want some potatoes. No, <laughs> pass it to Josh. Can I have them? Pass, who's Josh? Josh. <laughs> oh, the food. Right, here you go. <laughs> Nothing, it's okay, everything will be fine. But I have done something. I've fallen in love with you. That's what I've done. And I wanted to make such a good impression on your family. I just don't feel good. And I'm so, I'm so sleepy. And oh, my mommy hurts. And I'm just so tired. I just want to just, just a minute, okay? Just two minutes. I just need to. Uh -huh. Court of Inquiry is now in session. Does one of you guys have something to share with me? Spill it now. It was me, Dad. I put sleeping powder in her tea. So did I. And I didn't even try to stop them. And I just jacked with you guys. Okay. Well, you will be dealt with later. Helen. Huh? Yes. I have something that I need to share with you. Oh, oh. Um, my head feels funny, Frank. These, these uh, children have something to share with you. Here, here, stand up. <laughs> I'm sorry for putting all the sleeping powder in your tea. Oh. And I'm sorry for putting more after that. I'm so very sorry for not um, stopping. I'm sorry for distracting you guys. Oh, so that's what did it. 
Yes, it looks like you've been uh, a victim of the Lunesta Beardsley Boston Tea Party, and uh, your baristas will be dealt with later. Oh, Frank. You should be fine. Don't punish them too much. They were just being oh, honest. They don't want another mom, and I don't blame them. And you, you should be at sea. Well, Helen, there's something I must share with you. Yes, Frank? My intentions with you are not to have another mother for my children, because oh. they don't deserve a person as good as you. Uh, oh, sorry. And um, I just want to let you know that I love you. Oh, you I, love me? Yes, I've fallen for you. And, oh, Frank. And I have no intentions if you will have me to go back to sea and I will be here with you forever. Oh, Frank, do you mean that? I do. It was a typical wedding. Enemies of the bride on the right, enemies of the groom on the left. I've seen firing squads with more compassion. When I saw all those kids lined up, I wondered if Frank and I really had the right to do this to them. All you had to do was look at those faces to guess what they were thinking. All those photographers outside? They're gonna plaster our pictures all over the newspapers and TV. We won't be a real family. We're gonna be a freak show. Wait until my friends at school to find out about this. I wonder why they're getting married. She has mean eyes. How can I do it to them? How can I do it to Frank? All I had to do was be very calm, turn around, and run. On your mark, get set. Helen, dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in the presence of God and these witnesses to join together this man and this woman in the holy matrimony. Well, I hope you're enjoying our presentation so far this evening. Uh, now that they've had a disastrous dinner, we hope you will join us for a much better one. So, uh, Pastor will come and join me up here. We're gonna pray and have dinner. bow our heads Lord, forever. Father God we just thank you so much for everything you've done thank you for letting us get together just have a good time tonight pray for the food that we're about to eat we ask that you bless it in Jesus name Amen so dinner will be served uh, buffet style we will be dismissing you by table and I hope you enjoy it thoroughly